Fox. Now to help us focus on the fundamentals behind the technicals, just the person, David Williams, investor and forecaster at Page Trader. David, welcome. Happy Tuesday. I feel like it's been a bit since uh, we've had you on the show, but let's get right into it. Stocks at all-time highs. Important, I think, not to get caught up in the awe of all of it, but I like to look at the contributing factors of it, right? You've got the dollar rates. We were talking about that in our last segment. Here, I'm just pointing to crude oil, range-bound and contained. One could argue that's been a, a big contributing factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good morning, Ben. Great to be here. Great to see you again. Um, you know, when we look at crude oil, we can say, again, that crude oil is still in a very strong position. Uh, the S&P, of course, is in a very strong position. Um, kind of seasonally, we're in a strong position, this being an election year. And even on uh, the years themselves, meaning uh, the period that started from, say, 23 through 25, is also going to be bullish for both crude and, at least in our work, both crude, generally speaking, for both crude and the S&P. You mean in terms of the economy, in terms of China, in terms of, um, what, elaborate a little bit, please. Sure, sure. Those are the fundamentals behind it. And, they've, and Ben, they very well may play an important part uh, as they normally do in the backdrop of markets. But technically speaking, there are, just as you described, and I really like what you said about time and the importance of it, uh, there are periods of time that are going to be sort of naturally bullish or naturally bearish mm -hmm. for certain markets. Mm -hmm. And under the conditions that we have now, mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. crude and S&P are both in a bullish mm -hmm. period and we can go more into that, but that's basically what I mean. It's from the technical side. Uh, do you tie that uh, um, a, a, to the strength in the economy, so what we've seen here as far as economic conditions in the U.S. and globally for that matter? I generally rely entirely on the technicals, but I do will say that we lean or we will accept that there are bullish fundamentals mm -hmm. that are helping mm -hmm. the technical outlook. Um, we're not good, or maybe I could speak for myself, I'm not good at taking fundamental information and converting it into a very specific forecast mm -hmm. for what markets are going to do. Where we seem to do better is when we look at the technicals as the entirety of the market, understanding that there are fundamentals out there, but we view the technicals and we extract as much as we can out of the technicals and then if the the fundamentals back uh one of the ideas yeah. technically we're happy to take that along I, with us i feel like you extract the technicals right and establish the levels to keep an eye on and then all of a sudden every once in a while you're sitting around going holy smokes how did that fundamental narrative come to play mm -hmm. here that got us to these technical levels that we were like how will we ever reach these levels but then all of a sudden again that story or that headline develops that imbalance gets created uh, talk to us about some of those levels that you're watching here dave in terms of crude Oh, sure. Um, well, purely technically, again, we expect a further test of, uh, and nearby, we expect a further test of $79 in crude okay. in June. Okay. Uh, then we believe that crude will retest the 86 to $87 okay. level that we spoke about previously. And then we believe that crude is going to move up to 90 to $91 or okay. higher in the second half of 2024 and as early as the third quarter of 2024. Now, a really important part of this for us is that during the period where 90 to 91 is being tested, should a weekly or somewhat larger time frame close above, say, 91 or 92, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then we think the volatility is going to pick up and there's going to be a fast and somewhat explosive move up to 101 to 102 in that second Ouch. half of this year. So yes, there's a real potential, at least purely technically, for us to see not only 91, which isn't that far from where we are, but it's still a pretty good step up, but also possibly uh, as a result of some fundamentals, uh, if we want to tie those in, something to do with the war or something that would take us up to potentially retest the 101 to 102 after the 91 gets tested and closed above. Uh, you know, that's going to bring a, a bit of an agony to those of us who uh, like to hit the roads, right, this time of year, ultimately, mm -hmm. into the summer. I'm looking at uh, AAA. According to them, the national average for a gallon of gas, it has been coming off a month ago, 367. Last week, 361. Today, I'm looking 359. So we are starting to see some relief there. Uh, if we do see that rapid 
rally to those levels you just mentioned here. I would imagine that would uh, put the brakes on that. Let's talk about how I, I think you did bring up a very good point there. We've got a situation playing out in the Middle East, a very tense environment going on geopolitically, uh, adding to it some of the complexities in terms of what happened over the weekend uh, with Iran and that helicopter crash mm -hmm. and some of the reshuffling of, uh, um, well, the president ultimately and some of the offices that are held there. Uh, geopolitics, I think it's always important to remind traders that whether you're trading these products or not, ultimately you're susceptible, you have risks associated with these headline and news and developments associated with. Yes, and you really do have risk with headlines and you have to have some reason to be in the market before the headline or after the headline. You have to figure out who you are in the market so that you know what to do under certain mm -hmm. sets of conditions. I really don't like the idea of just getting excited and throwing caution to the wind because of a headline, but I do want to have some backdrop and some technical reason to be in the market. We do have a few bullish reasons on crude oil right now. You know, China's industrial growth mm -hmm has picked up some, uh, maybe six, six and a half percent or something over the year over year. Um, the stockpile, um, you know, we had a decline in the uh, stockpile of crude. I think the rig count picked up last week or this last six weeks or so. I don't have it right in front of me. Um, we also have uh, the potential for rate cuts coming from the Fed. And, you know, rate cut would be very, very good for the overall economy. I think the housing market and probably uh, crude oil consumption would pick up just on the idea that rates had been cut because there's a lot of fear about whether or not rates are going to continue to go higher. So those three things are probably the big fundamentals along with the geopolitical risk. There's an awful lot going on in crude. You really have to have your knowledge of what you're trying to accomplish in that market, what the what would have to happen to get you in and out of it, and not merely act on headlines, but headlines could be a big part of your overall technical and fundamental outlook. Yeah, I think that's important, right? A good reminder here not to chase the headlines, have the areas that you're focused on, reason to be in the trade, right? And then in theory, what you're hoping is that the headlines provide that catalyst that we were talking about that before, that kind of, oh my gosh moment. I can't believe we actually got to that targeted level. And then you look and you read the headline or the story, here's what it is, you know, ultimately that uh, provided that catalyst here. So David, appreciate you joining us here. A great look at price and some areas to watch in the coming days and weeks. David Williams, investor, is forecaster at Page Trader.